So, fun fact, this is actually the first time I've ever heard Misery Signals, so this should be interesting. Good morning, metalheads of the internet, and welcome to a new episode of The Metal Meltdown. Today, we are looking at Ultraviolet from Misery Signals, their first studio album in seven years. And no, I was not exaggerating a moment ago, folks. This is pretty much the first time I've ever listened to Misery Signals. Hell, to be honest, I hadn't even really heard of them until very recently. I can't really say I know exactly why, but I, I think the most obvious reason would be that Misery Signals has not been particularly active. As I mentioned before, they haven't released a studio album in seven years, and while they have toured a little bit in between that time and now, very little of that touring, at least as far as I can tell, has been in southern Ontario. So therefore, not only have they not been on my radar, but they haven't been on a lot of people's radars in my area for a long time. Like, just to make sure that I was hopefully in some kind of small minority, I reached out to a bunch of metalhead friends of mine from across Mississauga, Hamilton, Oakville, Toronto, and only a small handful of them were able to tell me who Misery Signals was. Kind of fascinating, honestly, because they seem like the kind of thing that would do really well up here. From what I understand, from what I've heard from other reviews, they've got a pretty experimental, melodic, hardcore sound, one that pulls influence from post-rock, from progressive rock, from thrash metal. It is ethereal, it is funky, it is wild, it is unpredictable, and retains the harshness that makes metalcore so invigorating still to this day. Top that off with a couple relatively positive reviews from the likes of Angry Metal Guy and even a fellow YouTube peer of mine, Jay Morris the Review Guy, and yeah, I've, I've got no reason not to be excited for this in theory. In execution, however, I found Ultraviolet to be a, a very inconsistent little affair. The definition of what I would call a hit and miss record. There are moments of this record that I do feel are very inspired and they are very powerful and the band is clearly riding a creative high. But other parts of this record show the band quite visibly stumbling. Like a group of cooks on Hell's Kitchen desperately trying to get their shit together before Gordon tells them to fuck off. I'm not gonna tell Misery Signals to fuck off, mind you. It, we're, we're definitely not at that level. But I'm also definitely not seeing what maybe everyone else is seeing in Misery Signals. And while I did overall enjoy this record, it's not one I'm going to revisit anytime soon. And truthfully, it, it makes me not want to check out other Misery Signal records. The record is, in my opinion, at its best when it's delicately balancing the realms of post-rock and metalcore, a task that in and of itself is quite difficult. You see, metalcore by definition is very brash and very stubborn, whereas post-rock by definition is very articulate and subtle. Metalcore requires immediacy, whereas post-rock requires patience. Almost by default, the two can't, or at least shouldn't, be able to fuse together. But every once in a while on Ultraviolet, Misery Signals are somehow able to make it happen. Take for instance opening track Tempest, which is probably one of the best examples on the record altogether of this very delicate balance. You have these walls of thick, groovy, churning metalcore rips constantly collapsing on top of each other, plus some incredibly brash, abrasive, throaty vocals. Definitely willing to bet that this motherfucker could not talk right for a week after finishing this album. Contrasting quickly with some very bright and dreamy passages, some very warm, rustic acoustic guitar, it makes this feel very heart-wrenching to an extent without being outright melodramatic, almost like uh, the Diet Coke version of Converge, if you will. On a similar note, the track River King opens on a very sweet, serene, dare I say almost romantic note, despite the incredibly hostile vocals. Using this to build up to an avalanche of sharp, calculated riffs and patterns, arguably making for the album's most progressive moment. And closing track, Cascade Locks, does a really great job of creating tension and creating anxiety without distracting you from the metal outrage that you would obviously be expecting. 
It makes this feel very epic, very dynamic. It's got a distinctly late 90s, early 2000s post-hardcore vibe that's kind of interesting to me. Like, there's great stuff here, don't get me wrong, but unfortunately the rest of the record just isn't capable of maintaining this very delicate balance. Take, for instance, Through Veils of Blue Fire, which wastes a lot of time building up to a sonic climax that it never actually arrives to. Instead, it just kind of fades out before leading into the following track, Old Ghosts, which is where the band completely abandoned post-rock altogether and opt to shell out possibly one of the most generic metalcore numbers I've heard in recent memory. Like, this is the definition of by the fucking books. If you had told me this was written by, like, Misery Signal 20 fucking years ago when they were a bunch of teenagers playing in their fucking garage, I might have believed you. On a similar note, the track Sunlifter packs possibly the most underwhelming and unnecessary breakdown I've heard in a very long time. It completely disrupts the flow of the track, which is a shame because it actually does start off kinda strong. To be fair, some great performances across the record do a great job in maintaining the momentum. I particularly love the percussion from Brandon Morgan. Like, this dude is clearly having the time of his fucking life and, and more power to you, dude. But ultimately, as far as the songwriting is concerned, it's still far too inconsistent for my personal liking. I'm unfortunately gonna give this a 2.5 out of 5. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a little disappointed with this one, to be honest. There are definitely some great moments, don't get me wrong, at least enough great moments that I would still recommend this to somebody, particularly somebody who's looking for something a little bit more imaginative within metalcore. But not to the point where I'd be like, hey, drop everything you're doing and go listen to Misery Signals e-fucking-mediately. A part of me wonders if maybe the reason why Misery Signals stood out so much in their time is just because they were inherently just different enough from the rest of metalcore in the mid-2000s. I mean, think about it. By the time Misery Signals put out their first album, the likes of Lamb of God, Avenged Sevenfold, Kill Switch Engage, As I Lay Dying have all put out some really big and powerful and successful records. Like, the definitive metalcore sound had very much been defined by this point, so somebody like Misery Signals who are coming in with, like, acoustic guitars and some brighter, more dynamic chord patterns and structures. That just inherently made a world of difference for so many people. I don't know, maybe I'm grasping at straws here. All I know is it's not really making a world of difference for me in 2020. Fact of the matter is there is a lot of metalcore out there that is way more ambitious, so if Misery Signals really wants to capture my attention in the future, I would recommend they get weirder, dive even further further into the post-rock and progressive worlds. Like, fuck the balance altogether. Just just get weird. Get wild. Go nuts. I don't know, That that's my thought on this at least, but then again, what the fuck do I know? This was my first experience with them after all. 2.5 out of 5? It's okay. Check it out, I guess, but don't rush. Don't rush. And that is it for the Metal Meltdown. I'm not an expert, nor do I claim to be, so what do you think? Do you like this record? Do you not like this record? And what do you want to hear from me next? Thank you for watching. Make sure you press that button right there. Subscribe for updates on the Metal Meltdown immediately. And you have yourself a fantastic fucking day.